Hey, what's up YouTube? I'm back. First video of the year on the channel, so Happy New Year. I hope you had a nice time and I wish you the best for 2023. Alright, so creating a sharp looking night sky may be a tricky thing to do. I've seen people use AK HDR cube maps for this, which is kinda insane. There's better ways to approach this and one way is to use the good old card technique, which is what I'm going to show you today. I also show you how to use a similar technique to create a nebula. Let's summarize what we are looking at though. A single 512 16-bit texture is used for this entire sky, which could even be downscaled to 276 without too much sharpness loss. There's also a single 5K triangles mesh, which uses three cheap additive materials, so that's three draw calls. I use vertex interpolation here and there on other tricks in all three materials to make them as cheap as possible. There's a tiny bit of overdraw, but overall I'd say it's a very efficient way of building night skies. It looks quite decent and natural, in my opinion, with lots of variety in star density and color, there's no visible tiling or pattern, and stars are even flickering just a tiny bit. I also added custom lens flares on some of the brightest stars, because why not? All in all, this entire night sky has a low impact on memory usage, which is always a plus. So let's jump right into it. Alright, as always I'm going to use Blender, but feel free to replicate my workflow in your favorite 3D software, right? So first things first, we can create stars using a few quads and a simple shader to draw spherical gradients of varying sizes. That's rendered in a 16 bits 512 texture using an orthographic camera. 16 bits was kinda necessary on my end to avoid bending issues when further tweaking those gradients in engine, but you could try 8 bits to further reduce the texture memory usage and see if that works for you. Regardless, here we really want to turn off color management to output linear values. Now, we are going to colorize stars in engine, so we can actually render those stars in black and white and pack the resulting image in the red channel of our star texture. We'll use a green and blue channel for something else. Once we have that, we can create a simple quad to draw that star texture again and again all over our sky. To do that, there's many solutions. The easiest way I found was to create a sphere, flip it normal and scale it a bit. Then I took that star card, offset its mesh in Z just a bit, and enabled the snap tool with the align rotation to target option. Then I centered the camera at 000, 000 and snapped that first card somewhere on that sphere. I repeated the process, duplicating that quad each time, and in a matter of minutes, I had covered pretty much the entire sphere with those cards. At this point, we should try to limit overdraw and try to somewhat evenly space each quad so they don't overlap each other too much unless you want a part of your sky to be completely black, obviously. Also, before doing that, we should make a scale check in engine with a single quad first, because we may need to scale that quad and or the scale of our stars in our star texture to have the desired look and sharpness in engine, and that will kinda dictate how many cards we need to place on that sphere. Furthermore, you may choose to only do the upper hemisphere, but it may be a good idea to do both in case you want to rotate the night sky on a given axis as the night goes on. Anyway, once that's done, we can further randomize the scale of those quads just a bit. Cool, now in engine we can create a simple shader like so. We'll want it to be unlit, use an additive blend mode, and we may also want to disable fog to gain quite a few vertex instructions. By default, fog is computed per vertex on translucent materials, and in case that looks bad, we can choose to compute that per pixel instead which usually drastically improves the fog accuracy on those materials, but it's obviously much more expensive. Personally, on stars here, I couldn't see the difference with or without fog, so I obviously turn it off. See for yourself if that makes a difference in your own scene, and disable that option in case it doesn't. Alright, that's a decent starting point, but it looks a bit dull and too uniform, right? There's many ways we can improve this. First, we can simply add more cards. Instead of using that same card, though, we can build new ones and choose to include fewer stars from our texture. That may help further randomize the star density and overall look. At this point, we'd probably want to fill holes and gaps with those new cards as much as possible, while still trying to somewhat limit overdraw. Cool, we can then repeat the process, create new cards, and this time possibly include even less stars. At this point, you may want to experiment with using more triangles to more properly cut out that star texture and thus limit overdraw, right? But then adding or removing, say, 1K or 2K triangles from your sky sphere mesh realistically isn't going to change much performance wise. And the material we use are all really cheap, so overdraw isn't probably much of a concern anyway, to be honest. 
I feel like it's really micro optimization at this point and you probably have bigger fishes to fry. So I personally stuck with very simple geometry and a bit of overdraw, but it's no big deal, I think. Anyway, moving on, here I used another trick to help me play those smaller cards somewhat randomly, because I'm not concerned with overdraw at this point anymore, and I actually may want to have those cards be on top of other existing cards. So I offset that card in Z like so to be at the correct distance from its center, then duplicated that card a bunch of times in place and then used randomized transforms to rotate them in all kinds of directions and voila. Then I recentered their pivot points to further randomize their scale just a bit as well. Now you may want to have complete artistic control and play those cards by hand to really control the look of your sky, right? It's really up to you. Sweet, that's starting to look quite decent, but we can do better. We can assign a random value per card in X in a second UV map. We can do this by hand in any 3D software, or if you use Blender, my DataBaker Blender add-on would be the right tool for this. Anyway, then we are going to use that value in our material to both fade out some cards and also add some randomized tint. And I'm going to take this one step further. See those smaller cards? I'm going to assign another random value, also per card, in Y in that same second UV map, and use that random value to further randomly boost the emissive on those cards. And that's going to make some stars extra bright and help bring some randomness to the picture. Cool. Now time to create a flicker effect, which, like the randomized color, isn't going to be per star but per card to keep the material cheap and simple. But honestly it's barely noticeable anyway, so who cares? Again, many solutions to this. We may, for instance, create a color curve and draw a pseudo-random looking wave in the alpha channel. That color curve can then be added to a curve atlas, which is sampled in our star material to modulate that emissive value with time. We may use fraction to make time loop and stars flicker on and on. Stars all flicker in sync though. To fix that, we can once more use that random value per card to offset time, then add that bit of logic to control how much flicker we want to add, and voila. It's starting to look somewhat decent and we are done with the first layer. We may now add stars that look a bit more unique and brighter to further add randomness and uniqueness to the picture, and even make them stand out by creating a cheap custom lens flare effect. In Blender, we can create a simple star mesh composed of a simple quad for the star itself and two crossing quads for the lens flare effect. We don't want this mesh to use two different materials though, that would add an extra draw call and we always kinda want to limit that. Instead, we are going to use a single material and somewhat split the logic in two, using a value once again stored in UVs to differentiate the star from the lens flare. Now that we have our hero star, we may add them here and there, but the thing is, we kinda want them to face the camera, right? Mostly because of that custom lens flare effect. It makes sense to have that lens flare always oriented the same way and looking straight at the camera, right? And to do that, we would kinda need to rotate each star around their own pivot point, which are all lost when the mesh is exported as a whole. We could then choose to bake pivots in UVs, but actually here we can cheat much more than that, because really we don't care about the precise position of each star, right? We only care about where they end up in the sky, which is basically far, far away in a given direction, and the distance is quite irrelevant. And because all our materials are unlit additive, the mesh normals are not even used, so we can mess with them and use them to encode that direction. For this, I personally created a very short custom Blender script, but I'm sure you can find other means in other 3D softwares. 
Basically, that script loops through each selected object, normalizes their positions to convert those positions into directions, and stores the resulting custom normals. Once that's done, we can reset rotation on those stars, make them point towards negative Z, reset their location as well, and export that. In Engine knows that all those stars are sitting at 0, 0, 0, we can easily scale them, and even choose to scale the lens flare separately from the star, using that mask computed from the second UV map. And we may also turn each star into a camera facing billboard using that transform load. Feel free to watch my previous video if you want to have more information on those kind of world position offset tricks. Anyway, then use the direction encoded in the vertex normals to push stars far, far away and make them take their final position in the sky. Cool. Then we may control those lens flare brightness based on how straight we look at those stars. We have one unused channel in our second UV map for those hero stars though, so why not once more encode a randomized value per star and use it to randomize both their brightness, tint and size in our material. Sweet, now we're really breaking that uniform look we first had, and the randomized star density, brightness and color starts to make our night sky look kinda cool and natural. Alright, one technical side note. We can make those materials cheaper by using vertex interpolators on any logic that doesn't need to be processed per pixel. So here, typically the emissive color is just one color per card. So that definitely can be processed per vertex rather than per pixel especially considering the vista or the sky sphere is always at a fixed distance, so the pixel coverage of those materials is fixed, right? So there's no tipping point at which vertex processing is going to be cheaper than pixel processing or the other way around. Same for the flicker effect and any other value computed per card, which is actually most of our logic, and that's going to make our materials drastically cheaper to render. Alright, for the nebula, we are first going to fill the remaining green and blue channels of our single 512 16-bit texture with styling noise. I personally created some nebula-looking noise using the pack of super high-res nebula textures I released on my Patreon, which I kinda kitbashed and copy-pasted here and there to create those styling textures, one in the green channel, one in the blue channel. Once we have that, we can create a curved plane like so and duplicate it a few times all around in a circle. Again, this is going to add a bit of overdraw, but it's more than acceptable for my use case. Just don't go crazy with the amount of layers you add, and you should be fine. In Engine, we can then sample the tiling noise texture, and because it's tiling, we can increase the resolution a bit and fix stretching if needed. We can also build a bilinear gradient from the texture coordinates and fade out the edges. Now it's looking a bit uniform, so I'm going to once again use UVs, to be able to say, hey, for this card, use that first nebula tiling texture, and for that card, use the second one. Also, feel free to flip that first UV map on some cards, so that the tiling texture is mirrored in X or Y or both. All that to make it less apparent that we do reuse the same texture over and over on all those cards. Sweet, now to add colors to this, there's multiple solutions. I chose to use the black and white values to sample a color curve, and that's very efficient, you have a lot of artistic control, and you can create very decent looking nebulas with this approach. I personally chose to keep the color somewhat subtle, but you can go crazy if you will. Now because we packed everything in a single texture, and that we do sample that texture once, we might as well add stars to our nebula and increase the star density of our sky for very little cost. That may be a bad idea though, depending on our tiling settings, so we probably want to make sure that stretch is minimized if we do want to add stars on our nebula.
Last thing we may want to add is the ability to fade in and out that night sky based on daytime, right? For this, we may choose to sample the atmospheric sunlight direction, and based on its Z value, we may modulate the overall emissive values between a min and a max on all our materials, and have our stars and nebula fade in and out based on the sun's altitude. Also, in this demo project, the star rotation was done using a simple blueprint that takes a given direction light and copies its rotation and add an extra rotation on top, and voila, that's pretty much it. Our beautiful night sky. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned a thing or two. Feel free to give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you like the content. Project files are available as a tier 1 reward on my Patreon, so feel free to join in and support me if you're feeling generous. That's it for today, I'll see you in the next video, take care of yourself, bye bye!